Let's go to my friend. He is the ahi to my empanada. He is the queso blanco to my chocolate. It's Danny Segura in the back. All right, we'll do the tweets afterwards, but let's get, okay. get to these calls. Set them up, son. What do we got? We got good stuff today? We do, man. Some real good stuff. Um, let's see. Well, let's just get started. Let's just let's see what happens. Yeah, thank you. Hey, guys. Uh, it's Corey out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada again. Last night was a great night of fights. There were so many that I'd like to talk about, but I just want to kind of focus on Adesanya versus Silva. Uh, do you guys think that Israel's performance was enough to skip Gaslam for that title shot? I don't really think that it was. Uh, I felt like like Adesanya needed to get that finish in the first uh, to make that happen. But anyways, uh, let me know your thoughts. And uh, yeah, one more thing is uh, I thought it was a great job by Gaslam coming out with Cejudo's belt and trying to secure his title shot. Uh, I just thought it was brilliant. Anyways, take care, guys. Thanks. All right, so a couple of things to tackle here. First of all, do you, I mean, with the UFC, like, we know that rankings and, you know, we've, we saw Colby Covington, interim champ, getting skipped over. Is there a chance for Adesanya to step in and be the next challenger to uh, Robert Whitaker? Uh, it is highly possible, but based on what he said in the interview here, if they wanted to run it back between Whitaker and Gastelum, he would let them, let them, you know, I mean, it's obviously the right. UFC's call, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't object. And then he would step in after that. He doesn't really care about the interim, you know, he seemed to find that idea absurd to begin with. So, um, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think, look, if you brought Gastelum to the point where he was at fight week for a title shot, there are no rules governing this, as I mentioned on the MMA beat, but the right thing to do is to honor that. Yeah. It's to honor that. So I think they should do that. By the way, I have an update on Gastelum and the um, the staff thing in a second, but go ahead, see what you okay. want to say. I think it's totally a possibility, but I don't think they will go that route because, you know, if Adesanya was making a claim to be the next in line, you know, regardless, uh, I think there would be an issue there. I'd be like, okay, maybe the UFC could possibly, you know, think about booking that fight. Um, but given the fact that he's like, eh, you know, like, I, I can wait for those two, and he's been pretty busy. Um, I, I think that fight will likely happen, the Gastelum, uh, Robert Whitaker. But, hey, you never know, right? Yes. By the way, I... Um this is from a somebody who is a ringside yeah. physician. Wait, do you want to? Um, okay, no, never mind. Go for it. Because on tweet, somebody asked you about the stuff. So. Oh, then I will wait. Yeah, then I will. Yeah, wait. hold on to That's that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So the next part about that question: What did you think about um, Gastelum with the belt situation? Look, uh, didn't work for me. But uh -huh. here's not your cup of tea. No, not my cup of tea. But a lot of things aren't my cup of tea that are everyone else's cup of tea. So really. Yeah, I'm hardly a – it's like my life is niche sports and death metal. It's like I wonder why I have no friends. But, um, look, here's the point. It's not that I care or don't care. That's irrelevant. What matters is um, fighters who have no guarantees will do a lot to rally the public or management on their behalf yeah. because they have no guarantees. That's what that was. So yeah. in that sense, it's completely understandable. Whether it worked – Ask somebody else. Yeah. I, I, I kind of liked it, but I, I definitely see where Gaslam's coming from. And, dude, he was on the headlines, you know, because of that. Um, I, I'm sure he would have been anyways because, you know, it was relevant to talk about his withdrawal. Well, R Whitaker's withdrawal and his canceled fight. But, man, th that was popping uh, a little bit whether you like it or not. So um, definitely a, a nice little insurance there to get that title shot, I thought. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. With that, that leads us to another question. Um, let's just, you know, we don't have to spend a lot of time in this one. Let's just clarify things. Okay. Because some people are confused. All right. Hey, Luke. This is Reggie from the MMA hotbed that is New Jersey. Can you just explain Reggie. this Robert Whitaker thing to me? And isn't the rule it's a forfeit once you weigh in? Or isn't that some sort of hard and fast rule that after the weigh-in, the about is officially on, that anything from that to the fight counts as a forfeit? Or is it just whatever, you know, Dana White and the commission decide? Thanks a lot. Love the show. No, there is basically is Kelvin Gaslam the UFC middleweight champion. No, there is no forfeit rule. I know he was like, yeah, I had some some people were asking me that. No, like, there, is, there. I mean, if you enter the cage and you say I quit before the first punch is thrown, that's forfeit. Um, yeah. But there's no forfeit rule by virtue of medical emergency. Yeah, I, and Kelvin's thing was like, you know, I come from wrestling, and that's not how they do it. I'm like, right, but this is not wrestling, so it's like, I, you know, <laughs> it's like I. I come from the uh, land down under, and here we eat Vegemite sandwiches. Right. Well, here in Los Estados Unidos, we don't. So there you go. Yeah. 
All right. Well, let's talk about Adesanya. He was he was definitely the big uh, the, the biggest winner out of that card. Um, so let's see what's next for him. All right. Hey, this is Richard from Las Vegas, Nevada. Richard. First off, I just want to say thank you for all your content that's on YouTube. We got it you, really honey. helped me get through work. Uh, my question is, Adesanya versus Jacare Souza. How do you see that match going? I think that's the way that UFC should go after Adesanya versus Silva. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hey, I think that'd be a fun fight, but is that the way the UFC should go about things, or should, should they put them on ice? That's what it? I thought they were going to do after UFC 230, because yeah. you've got one of the best strikers in MMA versus a guy who is obviously still quite the lethal threat. Now, he would have to get Adesanya down, but Jacare is athletic, and even at an advanced age, a very good wrestler, has always been one of the jiu-jitsu guys who could wrestle even from his early days in MMA. So, um, yeah, look... If you ask Adesanya, he's past it. If you ask Jacare, he's past that. I would not mind seeing it. Um, I, I think it's an important test of Adesanya, and I think it's an important test of Jacare. Plus, you know, look, if Jacare wins, he would deserve a title shot at that point. So yeah. it all depends on the timeline of the title, if you ask me, though. Yeah, let's see what happens with Robert Whitaker. According to Matt Damon, um, what's Matt four Damon. Weeks? <laughs> uh, I knew that was coming. Yeah, so... I, let, let, let's see what happens, but ideally, I would like to see. I think Adesanya did enough, and I think you can't top a win over Silva main eventing. Uh, you know, I would assume wherever they put him, you know, against Jacare, it would probably be a co main event of a pay per view, um, or maybe a main event ESPN. But I, I feel like he already did enough to like you know get a title shot. Um, so I'd like to see him wait. There's a lot of guys who are in really interesting, good, deserving positions. Dude, yeah. Adesanya a year ago today beat Rob Wilkinson. I mean, just think about that. Yeah. Five fights in a calendar. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, also give the guy a break, man. Come it's insane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're telling me Adesanya versus Jacare is a bad fight? No, it's an amazing fight. It's yeah. just, um, you want there's so many good guys you want to see do well. You got to give it to Gastelum. You already brought him to the dance. He is owed that. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's talk about the other side of the equation, Anderson Silva. By the way, thanks for acknowledging, um, you know. You were halfway right. You were more halfway right. You were more right than— I, I was pretty on point. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you were more— Okay, what, okay. what was wrong? What was Here's wrong? what I'll give you. You were certainly more right than me. I will give you that. But this idea that it, was, that it was, like, really competitive in the end— Not really, dude. Not really. He threw 11 strikes in the first and third hey, round. Hey, I, I had it 29-28. I thought Silva won one round. Yeah. <laughs> It was a it was a very technical battle. It was, was like, masters of, of 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 you know deception. I think it was uh, I think it was one round where it was close, and I think it was two rounds where one guy just kind of styled on the other guy. To be honest with you, and the tape kind of shows that there was tension in the room, yes. and it was closer than I thought it was going to be. And he probably took the second round. In that sense, you're you're more right than I am. What I object to is this idea that it was close throughout. No, it was not. It was not close throughout. Sure, but but you know now looking back, it was definitely a fight to make. I mean, it felt nice seeing like Anderson, like even Anderson Silva. I don't feel like he was a big loser, but let, let's just hold on to that idea and let's tackle this next okay, question. Okay. Hey, looking Danny, this is Bora from Edmond, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, big time fan, and um, I just had a um, question. What did you make of uh, Anderson's performance yesterday? Uh, for somebody who was like forty. Uh, 40-something, he, he actually, I think he looked pretty good. Um, and um, uh, I think he and Whiteman uh, three would be a great matchup. So um, let me know. You know, I hadn't thought about one. that. Thank you. That's an interesting question, a third fight with Weidman. I feel like that would work because I feel like God, you know, people even didn't get much of a uh, cl much closure in, in those two fights. You know, they could say, well, the leg break, the leg break. Well, you know, he was clowning. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of that still going. That's around. such an interesting question. Yeah. And to do that in Curitiba after he's coming off of a, a devastating loss. Wow. That would be interesting. Um, man, I, you know, I hadn't thought about that at all. That is such a great, great question. A yeah. great point. Do you like that idea? I do, I do, but I think there are, dude. The one that I've always been wanting to see is the GSP fight, and I feel like they're not gonna do it. Why not? You, no, no, you're not. You're saying it like it's a good idea, and I'm agreeing. I had Saint Pierre on my radio show just a couple of months yeah. ago, and he was like, "Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not happening. It's not happening." That that'll be forever. Uh, I know a lost you know. a lost opportunity. Yeah. I, I look. I, I agree. I agree. I certainly agree. 
It's just, it's just, I, you know, it's like the yeah. Nick Diaz thing. You just can't count on it, man. You really can't. And that that third fight with Weidman, that would be something. That would really yeah. be something. Here's the one thing I want to say about Silva. The well, here's what bothered me about that first and third round, and this is why I object to the competitiveness argument a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Again, you were more right than I was, certainly. But the one thing that kind of bothered me was, I mean, all right, I'll give you your due. I'll give you. I'm not afraid to give you your due. You have good ideas. That's why you're on the show. I like you. You're smart. Uh, the, what bothered me was, what is one of the telltale signs of decline? It is when someone stops throwing back a lot. And in the second round, you did not see that. That was sort of – and by the way, if okay. you remember uh, Anderson yeah. throws about three strikes a minute, three significant strikes a minute. It was a 15-minute fight. You're expecting about 45. In the second round, he had 20, which put him on pace for 60, right? So that was really, really good Anderson Silva right there. Fair, Not vintage, but pretty close. Mm -hmm. In the first and third rounds, he just wasn't throwing a lot. So here's my point. I'm not saying, oh, he's washed. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he was so high – that he can experience decline and still not get blown out, but not getting blown out, it's not enough. It's not enough to get that next gear, and that's what kind of bothers me a little bit. I would I would actually fight back against that argument. Okay. I think if you look at Anderson's career, I think this might have been the best striker he's ever fought, ever, maybe. Pure striker, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, and you we know Adesanya. We know Adesanya likes to disguise things. I mean, you you said it best on on the Monday morning analyst, how like, you know, he he he'll, you know, do a fake, he'll throw certain punches out there to bait you. Man, you gotta be careful out there, you know? So I don't buy too much into Silva's output specifically specifically for this fight. You know, keeping in mind that he was fighting the Yushinokamis and all these guys that perhaps are, are not as good as striking as, as Adesanya is. Yes. So and to, I don't put too much stock into it. To that. your point. His pace in the Bisping fight, I didn't mention this on the Monday Morning Analyst, was on pace. It was correct. Yeah. And then I forget who else he fought. Oh, on the Brunson fight, also, on, also Bisping's on not a one-punch knockout type of guy, you know. He's with volume, so you can't afford to go in there and mix it up with him. As, as Adesanya, you know, he really hasn't showed us one-punch knockout, but, I mean, he could he could damage you real bad if, if, if you're not careful. I take your pushback as real, but let's just do this. Yeah. Let's monitor his output going forward yes. and see if this is the beginning of that or if it was just an aberration. But safe to say, because this is this has been always my thing. Safe to say, Anderson Silva's not washed up. Safe to say, he's a top fifteen middleweight. Do you agree? I think I think I would give you that, but it's hard to say that in a loss. Like I need to see him beat somebody, not right. just hang around yeah. really good That's guys. True. You know? Yeah. I just want to see him in fun fights, man. At this point, like, like I said, you were more right. He was not as far gone as I yeah. thought, and that's where I was wrong. Um, now let's talk about Conor McGregor again popping up and threw out there an interesting idea. How about idea. that? How about yeah. that? He was Throughout going after Gastelum idea, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I actually like this idea better than the Wide Men 3, although I would love to see it down the road. Okay, go ahead. Hey, guys. What's going on? It's Ricardo from Toronto. Um, T-Dot. So after this uh, UFC 254 in the post by press conference, uh, Anderson had stated that he has spoken to Nick Diaz about uh, doing a possible rematch at UFC 237 in Brazil, uh, to which uh, your boy, Connor, on Twitter, responded with, uh, booked the fight, and said that he would fight Nate on it. So, a Connor-Nate trilogy, and Nick Diaz and Anderson, too, that's got to be the biggest pay-per-view of all time. What do you guys think about that? Thanks, guys. <laughs> Let me say something first. If anyone in the back can give me a tissue, I would be greatly appreciative of that. Um, okay, that aside. Do the old wrestling thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The old, oh, yeah. Um, here's what I would say. I mean, in the words of Jeremy Botter, why would you wear pants if you're going to have Diaz Silva on the same card as Nate McGregor? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh, that is. That would be the – just toss it. Hey! <laughs> nice catch. Still got it with the Odell Beckham Jr. of Kleenex! Huh? All right. Um, in any event, dude, that would be tremendous. It's just, how on earth are you going to get both Diaz brothers to Brazil? Good luck with that one. Yes. Uh, that's that's where I have a different opinion um, than Conor McGregor. Cause I think those fights, dude, I'm down to watch those two fights. Make them in Vegas, though. Hey, heck, make them in New York. Yeah. Um, but, dude... Yeah, th those would be great fights. I, I still want to see the Conor McGregor Nate Diaz trilogy. I think that has to happen before he retires. Hopefully, um, it, it's a, it's a, you know it's one one man. You know you gotta you gotta sort it out. And then the, the Nick Diaz Anderson Silva one. I think I think this time around it would be more fun than 
than the first time. I don't know. Can I make a point about the Diaz brothers? Yeah. When they were on MMA Uncensored Live on Spike TV, we got them both in studio at the same time. A feat that has not been accomplished since 2012. G-O-A-T. Your boy booked those two. We got them both in studio. Okay. I want credit as the greatest of all time. There is no more difficult feat. Bro, you'll find the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot before you find two Diaz brothers together. And Sean we Shelby did it. Sean Shelby and the UFC should hit you up, you know, make them fight on the same card. Like I said, dude, I have all these good ideas and no one ever listens. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, here we go. Just want to point that out. All right, cool. Um, do we got time for one more? Do you want to oh, switch have, no, no, to no, no. Uh, we have, we have, no, no, we have time for a couple more. We, okay. Once again, I'll just scream uptown like I always do. What's new? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about the upcoming card. Pretty good, man. It's that I would ESPN card, argue, yeah. Yeah, I would actually argue that it's better than the pay-per-view we just saw. I would. It's the first one at ESPN. They came correct. For sure. The matchups are really good. Yeah. Hey, Luke and Danny. It's Mike calling from Deerfield Beach, Florida. I just have two questions. My first one's about Carl Gracie. What is your expectation for his debut in the UFC? Do you feel that, uh, I feel like he comes in a little too desperate with his clinch game to try to come in for the grappling exchanges. Do you think Alex Caceres has been working on Muay Thai or any clinch work in the middle? And uh, what do you expect coming out of that fight? And then what is your dark horse fight for the fight card? Mine is between Vicente Luque. And uh, Brian Barberino and Algernon Sterling and Jim Rivera. Uh, what are your thoughts? Thanks again for the answer. If you get the answer. Um, okay. Great question about Crone. So let me say this: I have not seen his stand up. No one's seen his stand up enough. Yeah. Who obviously people who train with him have in order to make an accurate judgment about his abilities in that regard. So your guess is as good as mine. And if it's probably on the feet. Probably he loses. Let me be very clear as I look into the camera here about the groundwork. Probably no one in the UFC um, is as good as jiu-jitsu as he is. Now, there's Demi and Maya. He's up there probably as good, if not, uh, you know, Maya's probably better or certainly on the same level. Um, and then Jacare as well. But Crone was the last one of those guys at that level to compete and then make his way into MMA. We are talking about a level of jiu-jitsu where if they get you down, chances are there's just no looking back on that one. Very, 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 very high level. He is superb on the ground. As for the rest of it, I don't know. He mentioned Dark Horse. I'd like to call my Dark Horse on this one, uh, Danny. Jo uh, Jessica Penny versus Jody Esquibel. Mm -hmm. I have long been a fan of Jessica Penny. I thought that uh, we haven't really seen the best of her in the UFC. She was a different force before that when she was just roughing people up. Um, and she has always had really good ground and pound and good, good, uh, um, jujitsu that we just haven't really seen in the UFC. I don't know if we're going to see it against Jody Esquibel, but she was yeah. back from a USA suspension where she cleared her name and still got 18 months. So that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. There's so many, the, the thing about this card is that like, it doesn't have like a, a lot of star power, but the matchups are, you can, you can tell, you know, the matchmakers in this one sat down and carefully drew it out because Every single matchup is just fantastic. I can I can name a few, but I'm really excited for the Alex Casters Cron Gracie one. Um, I think Courtney Casey versus Cynthia Cal Calvillo or Calvillo that might be uh, that might steal fight of the night. Th these two girls good are call. very they're very scrappy. They're very good grapplers. They're they're good everywhere really, and uh, they always they have uh, a high output and high pace. So that should be a fun. You know what's great about this Courtney Casey and and um, and Calvillo, as you pointed out, two ladies who are technical. Yes, but also. If they got to they got to bite on that mouthpiece a little bit and thug it out, they will. Yep. Uh, which I kind of like as well. By the way, James Vic Paul Felder that was supposed to be at UFC yes. Nebraska, they rebooked that Casares versus Gracie yeah. Vicente Luque, the most underrated fighter in the UFC, oh, yeah, for sure. versus fellow Colombiano there, Brian Barberena. Uh, Tough as nails. Andre Feely. By the way, Brian Barberena ran into uh, Pete Rubish. You know who Pete Rubish is? No idea. He is one of the world's best deadlifters, and their world's crossed. Pete Rubish, shouts to Pete Rubish, tagged me in the Instagram post and uh, felt like a celebrity for once in my life. Nice. Get them followers. So shouts to Pete Rubish. You want to see a guy whose neck is the size of his waist and who can deadlift the moon. There you go. Yeah, but overall, good cards. Also headlining the prelims, the very early prelims, former UFC champion Hennem Barrao. Jesus, I didn't even notice Fighting that. Luke Sanders. And that, by the yeah. way, I favored Luke Sanders to win that one anyway. Yeah, wow. I always, I'm always fascinated by by these uh, type of matchups. You know, like 
not so long ago, you know, um, Maynard fighting Ryan Hall, uh, you know, et cetera, BJ Penn. W- when you get somebody that's really good that was at the top and, you know, they're they're looking to get back in there. And uh, it's always interesting to see if they, they're going to be able to turn things around. Agreed. Yeah. All right. We got time for one more? Yeah, we got time for two more. I mean, it's fine, dude. I'll just, you know. Okay. My, my life is a series of scrambles. Yeah. Let's talk about um, Robert Whitaker and his injuries. Hey, good morning, Luke Thomas, Danny Segura. This is Charles Jaylen calling out of Atlanta, Georgia. My question hey, TL is about, Georgia, what can we do for uh, you? Robert Whitaker. Uh, do you think he has become the most injury-prone champion the UFC has ever had? Um, yes, I understand this last injury was very, very significant. I mean, I, too, have had an inguinal hernia surgery uh, back in December, and I missed the whole month of December pretty much. Uh, I was limited to weightlifting for that whole month, so. I understand that injury, but the facts are the facts. I mean, he fought one time in 2018, and prior to that, his last fight was like July of 2017. So he has a lot of inactivity. I mean, he's so very scared. I love seeing him fight, but what do you think his ceiling is? Or, you know, is he is he still in his prime, or has his prime been okay. diminished? All right, all right, I get it. Um, here's the deal. It's a great question. He always calls with good stuff. Yeah, the injury prone thing. It's like um, you heard Adesanya's theories. Maybe it's a way he's training. Here is one thing that there's not much science on, but what science there is kind of tells us there might be more to dig. Not everybody's body is as susceptible or as resistant to injury as everyone else's, and that sounds kind of obvious. But here's my point: even if you took somebody else of the same physical dimensions as you or me. Um, same weight, same height, same you know uh, limb length, all the different things you could measure, same body fat composition, they still might have wildly different ability to resist injury. There's been yeah. guys, you've sure you've seen the training room, they can go to jiu-jitsu six days a week. They yep. can roll two hours a night, and they get a little sore, and they take a day off, and they're fine. And there's other guys, they'll roll two, three days a week, and they get messed up doing it. Um, some people get cauliflower ears, some people don't. It's this weird thing where – um, my my favorite NFL team, the Washington Redskins, their tight end Jordan Reed was going to be one of the best tight ends in the league, except he just get t- constantly gets injured. Uh, and then there are other guys, similar body type, that just they just don't. They're iron men. So he could just be a guy, and I don't know this for a fact, but here's a yeah. theory. He could just be a guy who's just injury prone, and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it. Is he still in his prime? Guys, people don't understand the prime. Prime is when you're at your peak physical powers and when that intersects with your sort of uh, technical skill maturation. You get out of it around your early to mid thirties. He's twenty eight. Yeah. He is so quite clearly in his prime. Yeah, I still feel like he still hasn't hit uh, peak Robert Whitaker. Um, we might see. You know, he might just keep improving in the next couple of years. Um, but you know, to answer this question, it, it is a little bit concerning just because he's young and dude, fighting Yoel Romero for fifty minutes is not good for you. Bro, it messed him up a That's little a bit. Fact. Again, these guys yeah. leave a piece of themselves yeah. in there. Um, but certainly, he, you know, I, I feel like other champions, you can name Cain Velasquez, uh, even Dominic Cruz, uh, they've been uh, hindered by injury way more than, than Robert Whitaker has. The thing about Cain, though, that, I, again, I don't know this for a fact, yeah. but you've seen the infamous videos of his old, old, old training style. I mean, how do you not get injured training exactly. that way? Right. Yeah. right. How do you not get injured? Yeah. So part of it also is training and fatigue management. Yeah. I, I don't feel like this for Robert Whitaker. I don't feel like it's like a training issue because, you know, for example uh, – it just doesn't come off that way to me. Um, but, you know, I feel like it's more of a body type thing, as you said. But who knows? All right. All right, let's talk about, you know, the pay-per-view times. Oh, yes. Yo, this is Oliver out of QS, Florida. Uh, just watching the sound right off, up. Uh, episode 467. I just have, have to reiterate a point. Uh, the quickness of the ESPN card made all of the difference. Um the extended length of the previous cards drove away so many of my friends from watching the sport. If we could get pay-per-view cards down shorter and over at a more reasonable hour, I think the sport would grow exponentially. Anyway, thanks for the show. Have a good one, y'all. Dude, the pay-per-view over the weekend, what the main event was over a little bit after midnight or something. Yeah. Something crazy like that. Dude, how awesome was that? That was so fun. Dude, I'm, assu- I'm assuming you're sharing my sensibilities about yes. this one. Yeah, I thought the time was great. Um, you know, how do you feel about pay per views being, for example, because the standard is always five fights, right? Yes. I think they've added more in the past when there's been like you know two three belts being defended. I think for the New York one. Um, 
Uh, no, I'm they not- had three fights. No, no, they, 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 it's been five for almost as many years okay. as I've been covering the sport. They'll have another one they throw in that they air on the broadcast right, that yeah. they air earlier if there's time or something, but. It's been five, yeah. I know the UFC for a while tried starting them at 9 p.m., and I feel like that that wasn't working. But again, that was like years ago. I might, it must have been like six, seven years ago maybe. I don't know. They tried earlier at 9, which I thought was awesome, but I guess yeah. they didn't like the results or what the feedback was on yeah. the uh, – or, you know, even pay-per-view buys. I'll just say this. The uh, paper – the uh, the card for this one starts – the main card starts at 9 for UFC on ESPN1. And, you know, they're done in two and a half hours. And folks uh, – someone uh, bit back. They're like, that's only like a half hour, 45 – Maybe at most an hour shorter. Let's say it's forty-five. Split the difference, dude. Forty-five minutes of less I'll, bullshit. I'll take it. I'll take that it. is so. I mean, that is such a tax off yeah. the, a burden that has been freed from us, dude. The FS1. I'm not kidding, man. The way they did that, dude. I'm not. I'm being dead serious. I know I beat a dead horse with this one. It affected my fandom, dude. It affected dude. my willingness to watch. I was resentful of having to sit there and watch that with the SPN just going like this. It's like. Yeah. Mana from heaven. Yeah. Like, essentially, we all came here to watch fights, not commercials. So I understand, you know, it's part of it. But, like, some of the stuff that they were rolling out on FS1 was just filler. It was nothing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really glad ESPN is, is picking it up. You want to switch over to tweets? tweets? Yes, because I'm going to have to get out of here. Good job right, this cool. week. Sounds good. And um, we'll be back next week. Uh, and enjoy the fights, my friend.